I'm Eddie Cannell. And I'm Tom Cannell. Welcome, everyone. This is the Mortgage Brothers Podcast Show, and today is Friday, August 5th. And this is the interest rate update. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. We like to make sure we answer all questions you have. And remember, this is for informational purposes only. This is not financial advice. That's right, folks. We are smart, but we did not get our PhD in finance. All right. Okay. So 30-year fix today. Today, a lot of movement in the markets because this is the unemployment number that happens once a month. But today, we saw the interest rates rise 4.875 for the 30-year 15-year fix at 4.25. You have the 30-year FHA, 4.5. The 30-year BA, 4.5. These quotes have no points, and they're based off of these loan loan assumptions for conventional FHA and VA loans. For example, primary residences. Uh, this is for credit scores above 740. The loan amount of 400000 A loan to value of 75% for conventional. Everyone's scenario is unique, but this is a very common scenario. Uh, for conventional, again, no points, nothing yeah. extra that you should be paying for those rates. That's right, nothing hidden. Every loan comes with standard closing costs. Yeah, everything costs money. But our point is there's nothing extra, there's nothing hidden, in which we call the point factor. That's right. A lot of banks will show you a rate at 4.875, but they'll be charging you $4,000 in points to buy to get basically buy down that rate mm-hmm. and just fyi interesting a point typically would represent what they say 100 basis points 1.1 1. 1%. percent why do you call them basis points that's a different podcast mm-hmm. but technically when someone says are you charging me a point that literally means 100 percent of one of one uh so of one percent yeah so one percent is that right 100 percent of one percent no, it's just one. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be just a hundred. I mean, one percent. It's just it's just one yeah. percent, but it's a whole. It's a mm-hmm. whole one percent. Mm-hmm. There's fractional points and things like that. But technically, when someone says a point, that's what it means. It's Look, it's, it is a hundred percent of one percent. <laughs> so I was I was right. It's a hundred percent of one percent versus a fractional. Yeah. Um, and we can get in again to that later because it is. It's quite fascinating. Yeah. So no points for those rates, and today. The big news is is that the job the the job report it's the unemployment unemployment or they call it the employment numbers very high today they blew out expectations um the economy the US economy this is again this is August 5th this is from Yahoo Finance added 528,000 jobs in July because it always looks back a month um and one of the big comments here's here is that all the jobs that were lost all the people who had left the job labor market due to COVID have basically come back and all those unemployment uh, numbers are erased. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting, we were talking about this the other other day on a macro level, um, you know, good news is sometimes being viewed or not sometimes is generally being viewed by the market as bad news because every time there's good news, they're like, Oh, the feds are going to, you know, increase rates. So just like today, here we go. Some good news. So what does that mean? Oh, but it's kind of bad news because it means the feds are going to increase interest rates or they're going to continue to be more likely to. So So really, really interesting. That's absolutely right. So what Tom, just another way of maybe looking at it too, is that, I mean, this means the market's hot. And this means that, the economy is doing pretty well. Now, for a lot of people, they aren't they don't feel like it's doing well. But this is saying the way that the the way that the traders on Wall Street are going to interpret this is that the economy's hot. And yeah. if the economy's hot and inflation's really high, then the Fed will be aggressive and try to slow down the economy. Right. How do they slow down the economy? Is they going to add more or increase interest rates more? So they think the next time the Fed's going to meet in September, yeah. they're going to be maybe increasing more. So that's why we're seeing higher rates today. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and it's all based upon positive news. Mm-hmm. So we had a great question from a, uh, a listener of, a, on our channel, uh, and Ivy B is her name. She asked us if we did loans in Texas. Right now we're not licensed in Texas, but we wanted to run this scenario for her. Now, again, we, do, we don't – every state may have slightly in different interest rates, but we're going to run this scenario for her. As, though, as if she was in Arizona. Yeah, as though she was in Arizona. For we're just assuming this is a primary residence. Credit scores are above seven forty. 
And let's just say the home value is three hundred and twenty-five thousand. She had a lo- she, had, she said she wanted a loan amount at two forty-three. If the interest rate's four point eight seven five, this would be her principal and interest payment plus taxes plus homeowners insurance. We know we're guessing on that. That means total payment at fifteen fifty-five, mm-hmm. or you know, almost fifty-six. Plus closing costs. This is, these are the estimated closing costs and prepaid tax and insurance. And again, closing costs. That's the appraisal, title fees, all those things kind of lumped in. That's the estimate that we would show. Um, what, what was the other point here? See where it says estimated cash to close. I mean, the bar our borrowers and refinances can roll those into the loan. Yeah. Yeah. People think on a purchase you can roll these costs in. We wish you could if it would make it, you know easier for borrowers because it's less cash to close but on purchases it's always in addition to because they don't want that down payment being diluted now in this case because this down payment is so high um she could exchange you know mm-hmm. some of her down payment for for cash to uh, for her her uh her extra closing costs and escrow account yeah but, but for those doing just the minimum down payment it's always minimum down payment plus your prepaids and your escrow Versus in a refi, you can roll those in. Yeah, so we just take this forty nine hundred and add it onto the loan amount, and then she wouldn't have to come in with any mm-hmm. any cash. That's right. A lot, most people do that. I mean, I'd say about eighty percent of customers seem to, or maybe even ninety percent of customers, yep. don't want to bring anything to cash. Now, if if you are super on top of it today and you you drank all your coffee, you would you would know if that loan amount was was raised and it went and it dropped that equity in the home below 25%, there might be a slight pricing adjustment just because we're moving from one loan to value bucket to another because everything's on what we call like that nickel, that nickel mark, you know, 5% down, 10%, yeah. 15, 20, 25. So besides that, that, that quote should be pretty. Yeah. That's what we'd be looking at today. Again, totally hypothetical uh, for a scenario like this. And we do this Monday through Friday. Next week, inflation reports are coming out. We're going to be Yo, following rates. How exciting is that? Inflation. More inflation. Yes. So, but yeah, you're monitoring rates. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. And we'll be back on Monday. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you, everyone, for watching our show today. If you have questions, be sure to email us at rates at azmortgagebrothers.com. And be sure to take a look at all of our other videos on our channel.